July 3rd, 1863. The final day of the Battle of Gettysburg took place some 150 years ago today. It was the culmination of all the previous day's fighting. During the afternoon, a artillery barrage was loosed by the Confederates of more than 150 guns, the largest of the entire war. Union artillery, after pausing briefly, responded in kind, and more than 250 artillery pieces were trading fire after about 40 minutes. The Confederate artillery failed to dislodge the Union positions near the center of the Union line, and 12,500 Confederate infantry moved forward to assault the position. They were bloodily and handily repulsed marking what would be considered the high watermark of the Confederacy. Now, while that was the most famous affair which took place on July 3rd, and would be later referred to as Pickett's Charge, it was not the only fighting that took place that day. Early in the day, Union troops had attacked and pushed back Confederate troops on the southern portion of Culp's Hill. Later in the day, around the time Pickett's Charge was occurring, the Union actually fought a cavalry action versus the Confederates. General Stewart's cavalry troops had attempted to get around the Union flank and around the Union line so that if Pickett's Charge was successful, the Confederates would be able to exploit the Union position and capture supply wagons, troops, transports, any other means to hinder a retreat and also possibly cut off an army. They failed. Then, later in the day, after Pickett's charge had failed, a Union cavalry brigade of Judson Kilpatrick's division launched a charge against the Union troops, or so, I'm sorry, launched a charge against the Confederate troops on the Confederate army's right, the Union left, southwest of Big Round Top. This attack was bloodily repulsed. This is, once again, I am playing Scourge of War Gettysburg to simulate the action. This is the battle between General Kilpatrick's brigade under Elon Farnsworth and a Confederate brigade, Anderson's brigade, of General Hood's division in Longstreet's Corps. While the more famous action which took place might garner more views, more interest. I did find this one an interesting one. As essentially, if the Confederacy had faltered here and the Union cavalry had gotten around their flank, it's very possible that General Meade may have been more aggressive. If not later in the day on July 3rd, then perhaps by the time July 4th rolled around, he would have launched an attack. No attack did occur on July 4th, of course, and General Lee did withdraw, but it did take him quite some time and an attack on the third might have proved quite successful. At the very least, an attack at the very least, an attack on the fourth as Lee was withdrawing certainly would have proved successful as the Confederate Army was nearly entirely out of artillery as a result of the massive barrage they loosed against the Union on July 3rd. Now, Anderson had taken place, his troops had taken place in the fighting on July 2nd, so they were really not in the best of shape, but Kilpatrick's troops were fresh. Now, interestingly enough, Kilpatrick, the Union commander, had a reputation for being reckless with his men's lives. Um, he would often order charges or attacks without thought for the impact on his soldiers. In fact, this battle was a perfect example. His brigade commander, Elon Farnsworth, protested against such an attack, and yet Farnsworth overruled him. At one point, Farnsworth even went to attempting to humiliate Elon, and eventually, after threatening to take the charge himself, um, he, he, Elon did agree to lead the charge. Now, Elon Farnsworth was killed in the charge, the charge which he protested against. So there is that. I do apologize, I may have already said this, but um, I am recording the audio on this live. I haven't um, recorded and then edited it, so this is this is all live here. 
Um, the video uploading obviously is not live. You're probably watching this well after I've actually uh, created this. But that being said, all the commentary here is live. The audio from the game I don't believe will filter in. It's really just going to be audio from... Uh, why aren't they holding this position? What do I need to do to... Hmm, that's interesting. Not quite sure why uh, this position here isn't being considered held. I've got an officer here. I have a unit here. I guess sometimes you need more men. It's possible I don't have enough men in the vicinity. I don't know. But why pull them back if I don't need to just to hold an objective point? That's kind of silly. I guess I'll do that. It's not like I need the men over there anyway. So my artillery is firing into the Union troops here in the road, dropping some devastating canister. As you can see there, that last canister round uh, just took out... Well, seemed like it was a lot more than perhaps it was. I'm not sure why my infantry aren't firing at the enemy, though. Maybe we can get closer. What's the range here? Range is 160, just like on every other gun. Why aren't you shooting? Whoops. Why aren't you shooting? Man, that's kind of awesome when the, both of those guns fire at the same time, though, dropping canister into the Union ranks. Speaking of suicide, this unit should probably retreat. Hopefully they regain their form. There we go. We're holding the objective now. I think that's absolutely stupid that I have to get two units there, though. That kind of is weird. I never noticed that before. I know some objectives, technically, I think they require you to sometimes have, like, 500 men or 250 men. And I get that. You know, certain objectives, you could have two guys there, theoretically. They, they wouldn't be able to hold a certain objective. But, um... When my first regiment starts out so far in advance, and the rest of them are already in a line here, why not move the objective up a little bit? Anyway, I'm nitpicking. This artillery here seems to be holding down this Union regiment pretty much on their own, decimating them. I'm surprised they're not charging. I think that would have been kind of cool to see uh, horse horses charge right into our, our lines. This regiment's lost over 60 men. So that's pretty effective, to say the least. Looks like they've got about three regiments in line here under Farnsworth, or sorry, under Elon. Farnsworth did make it through the war, despite being somewhat reckless with his command. He did uh, survive through the war and actually died in 1881. He was only 45 years old, which is kind of amazing. He was in his 20s uh, when he was serving in the Civil War. Um, served from the age of... The war started when he was 25, and by the time the war was over, he was 29. Calvary was a peculiar branch, really. Um, you would uh, you would often see younger commanders. General uh, Custer was incredibly young. He was in his 20s as well and became a general during the Civil War. Um, Kilpatrick's the same. So I, I think... On the land, on land, um, cavalry might be comparable to what being like a frigate captain would be in the navy during this time period, or during the age of sail, maybe a little bit before this time period, um, where the young, dashing commanders would be the cavalry commanders, and that independence of command and freedom of movement and that sort of nobility of position would be a kind of tied to um, that of the cavalry commanders. Uh, very similar to the frigate commanders, although in sort of a different way. You know, being a frigate commander, you'd have a lot more freedom uh, to do what you want uh, than being a, a commander on a battlefield within, you know, just a couple of minutes' ride from a commander. No, you're going to stay there. Stop. Stop. Go. I want you to stay behind the fence. I don't want you to walk out in front. I'll take charge of you. Why do you keep walking out into the field? I'm guessing that building's in your way, maybe? Yeah, probably. But now they're sitting in the open. 
Well, that won't do. See, I've got to keep these two regiments back here so I can hold this position and rack up these points. While deploying them forward seems to be the smarter move, in my opinion. And now these guys are out in the open. They're taking fire. Got to get these guys within range to support them. See, they've got Enfields. They've got Mississippi rifles. And they've got Enfields. So my troops here are mostly uh, well, well armed here. But as I was saying, I think this battle would have been, uh, it's interesting, because as decisively as these troops are thrown back, I don't know a whole lot of details, but I would think that would probably um, dissuade uh, General Meade from launching an attack if a uh, attack met with very little success. But if they had won and driven back the Confederates and had only even temporarily held these positions here, it's possible they could have encouraged General Meade to launch an attack. It's hard to say for sure. I mean, who knows? But I, I definitely don't think it's unreasonable. Yeah, these guys are retreating. I wish I had command of those artillery pieces. Something tells me my men are going to get pushed back, if only under the sheer weight of the Union. I mean, look at this battle line. Oops. I've got men all the way along there firing at my line, and I've got a pretty small line. I've only got a few regiments, so they're pretty small regiments. Now they're kind of charging on foot down the road. They've driven off the, the uh, artillery, which was my... Uh, I don't know if it was my most effective, but it was certainly my most deadly unit. These infantry are going to move into position here where they can rally. These infantry are going to move north to the aid of the 9th Georgia and the 7th Georgia. The 11th Georgia. You know, it looks like an artillery battery is being formed up here. Two of them in our rear, or at least one. Not quite in canister range, though, so not doing quite the damage. It's interesting, Kilpatrick was so abrasive as a commander that he was eventually his division was shipped out of the east toward the end of the war because they were so difficult to deal with and they had gone through a, a somewhat of a scandal um, later in the war. Why do these guys just walk into the enemy line? That was strange. Guys out in the open just getting mowed down. Got to be a better way to handle these troops. I mean, I don't want them in the open, but I don't want them not shooting or being further back because I can't with the buildings in the way. I don't know. Here, let's see here. Reform here. Let's see if they really fit there. Yeah, we'll fire here. Okay, now we got the fence for protection. Granted, it's after I've already lost 150 casualties and nearly half of the regiment, but hey. Um. 
surprised. Okay, there we go. I was going to say I'm surprised that unit hasn't driven back those Union troops, considering they've... Cavalry doesn't tend to stand as well in a stand-up fight, and there have been some changes made with the um, Brandy Station release, it seems, where Cavalry does better in a stand-up fight, but still, I'm not sure if, how that affects the previous scenarios, but... Still, that was pretty heavy punishment for them to take. They took over 80 casualties, and for a reserve cavalry brig division or brigade or regiment or whatever, that's difficult. Now this one's got its flank being fired into, so they should be driven back shortly. And there they go. Off they go, retreating. Thanks to the 8th uh, pulling back, I was able to drive back the first. Originally I said there were only three Union Cavalry Brigades, but it now appears there's at least four. I can only see three right now, but the other one just retreated beyond that field, so... I have no idea whether the third is charging forward on foot, but I'm guessing if Farnsworth were here, he'd about to be... would be about to die. Or not... yeah, Farnsworth. Brigadier General Wesley Merritt. Oh, he's not the one who led the charge. Granted, this is all dismounted fighting. Obviously, they're not on horses. So they retreated. But now they're running back toward me. You want to fight me again? Come on. Just run away. Know what's best for you. I've got a unit taking almost 100 casualties. Actually, more than that. I've taken 173 casualties. Only inflicted... Uh, what, 80 some odd on them, the enemy? And yet they're still standing and fighting. Don't you dare try and overwhelm me. I've got one, two, three, four brigade or regiments in line now. This unit's getting close to pulling back it would look like their line is not nearly as strong as it was before these guys I'm surprised I mean I guess they kinda do have uh, if you look here they kinda do have no I feel like they'd be shooting down a hill right into them although there is kind of stone wall protection on the flank there turning to face the oncoming uh, Union I don't really have a whole lot left to talk about. I mean, this battle's almost over. I've done three pretty uh, long and somewhat extensive uh, videos on the first two days of Gettysburg. Um, this is just kind of a kind of a casual playthrough here of the the third and final day. Um, I'm all I'm actually posting these all from St. Lucia, so these are all already uploaded well before the third, probably around the last week of June. Uh, but I'm going to be in St. Lucia on a vacation, so these are going to be scheduled to come out and become public um, by the time, you know, on the proper dates. So hopefully this all goes well. If it's published late, that'll kind of suck. Uh, Fraps doesn't allow you to record um, audio and for from in-game and audio from your talking uh, in two separate tracks, at least as far as I can tell. So I had to disable the sound for the game so I could upload the audio over my voice. Instead, if I did both at the same time, the combat sounds would likely drown out the sound of my voice. Um, so that's why you're probably not hearing any game sound here today. Although, strangely enough, Sony Vegas, which is what I use, uh, tends to edit out the audio. Um, not edit it, but a lot of times audio will be captured and it'll be silent. So I'm not quite sure why, but... It's definitely not ideal. Cavalry does have the nice ability to withdraw and be ready for combat again pretty quick. My 
The brigade's getting shot up pretty bad, though. Only... Well, I've lost about... I've lost 356 men out of a total of 1,300 and... 1? 1,311? I can't do math. Well, 1,300 and... Let's see... 51. I'm under 1,000 men. So I started out with a decent size brigade, although definitely a brigade like this normally wouldn't have... What is it? Normally wouldn't have six regiments. You know, 1,300 men would make a pretty solid brigade strength-wise, but you normally break them apart with four, maybe five regiments instead of six. That's in the ideal, but it's also kind of how you saw things... Uh, developed during the Civil War, a unit would be formed and wouldn't necessarily get reinforcements. I mean, sometimes you would, but um, often you would get no reinforcements throughout the war. So regiments start with, might start with eight or 900 men. By the time the war was over, it might only have 100 men, sometimes less. The Confederacy during the Antietam campaign, or after the Antietam campaign, because of significant losses and having situations where regiments were um, only consisting of, where did this regiment come from, the 11th Georgia? Where were they? Oh, the, the regiment in the center. Um, often during uh, the Battle of uh, Antietam, there were a couple regiments that only had 70 men. And obviously, a, you know, you need more than that to form an effective regiment. That's not even a company. So the Confederacy did do some consolidation, and there were some Union regiments when, you know, half the regiment's papers would run up, the rest of the unit would be assigned to another regiment. Uh, so there were times where regiments were consolidated, and uh, Grant actually consolidated some of the divisions before uh, the Wilderness and kind of really beefed up the size of the corps. For example, the Second Corps became huge, almost the size of a Confederate Corps, which were typically almost two times larger than Union Corps. Um, but by the Overland Campaign's conclusion, that also changed because the casualties the Union suffered in 1864 during the Overland Campaign were so massive and unrelenting that units simply were bled dry, and they had to strip down the fortifications of Washington to keep the attacks going. My units here are being overrun. I've already lost one to retreat and others borderline cut off. They're starting to fall back here. So I've got two units in retreat. I've driven back another Union regiment though, so at least there's that. Huh. Unit is rallying. I've only got three bullets, though. I don't really have a resupply wagon. Let's see what's all back here. General Law. Yeah, it doesn't appear I've got a resupply wagon that I can order around anyway. More artillery over here. The first Texas of Hood's division is over here. That's interesting. Our line kind of seems to extend out a ways before curving back upon itself. Union cavalry over here. Very interesting. This is actually, this must be big round top here. All these units are almost like they're just kind of sitting there. Some of these placements seem interesting. Where's that flag? I'm just kind of going off. That can't be a like big round top. It is big round top. Whose brigade is that? Works Brigade of Hood's Division. Hmm. Yeah, 
Interesting. Okay, let's go back to me. Sorry, guys, got a little bit distracted there. Let's see the situation here. This regiment's fallen back. Enemies overrun my left. My right unit is holding out for now. I've got some units in line here along a fence line back near the objective point. Uh, although only one of those regiments is really fresh. The other only has three bullets. Good number of men, but only three bullets, so... Can't expect too much of a fight from them. General Longstreet, eh? Once again, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here, just kind of going back. We've got the 11th Georgia still retreating. Looks like they're going to retreat off the map, unfortunately. Couldn't you uh, save them, General Longstreet? Couldn't you encourage them to stay? Or are you just going to sit on your horse and let them walk away? Hmm. Well, that's kind of cool. Alright, whatever. So, probably got about four more minutes here. I think we should be good. The enemy has overrun my first position. They didn't do it with cavalry charge, so their commander didn't get himself killed. Uh, instead, they did it dismounted, and they've been pretty effective in driving me back. But it's probably too little too late. With a fresh regiment here and a fence line, and it looks like a piece of artillery they're going to have to drive through first, which already drove one regiment back. I find it unlikely they'll be able to drive any of mine back. Unless they decide to mount up and start legitimately charging, which I see no indication that they will. Quite a few stone walls here. Seems like Gettysburg has more stone walls than other battlefields. I haven't routed them, but I've definitely bloodied them, so... That's nice. Looks like they drove back that other artillery piece. Captain Hart, I recommend you get out of there. There you go. be interesting if uh, some other features were added, like maybe destructible environments. That would be kind of cool. Have this house, artillery fires into it, it could kind of fall apart. Probably not all that important, though, to be honest, for something like this. It's more there to be eye candy. Man, the 7th George has lost almost two-thirds of its men. Finally there, it's retreating. So we've got one more artillery piece between us and the enemy over here. We've got about two minutes of gameplay left. Union are suffering heavy casualties. Though. They've got two regiments in retreat again. But cavalry does rebound pretty well. Doesn't look like they're going to press it, so that's good. Should allow me a decisive victory here on the cavalry fields. But uh, with this video coming to an end, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, this is the conclusion of my three-part series on the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. I definitely enjoyed this series. It's a fun thing to put together. My Chancellorsville videos were pretty well received. Pardon that, I don't know if you heard that, but I was yawning. I probably should have hit the mute button.
but uh, I'm not really going to have a chance to go back and edit this. Uh, like I said, my wedding is coming up in a couple of days here, and uh, really kind of overwhelmed. This is kind of the last hurrah for playing the game uh, before the wedding, and got a lot of stuff here to do, and um, so I'll probably won't have any more videos coming out for a couple of weeks. Now, like I said, uh, this probably won't appear as late um, or as infrequent as you'd think, because I'll actually be uh, tanning in the beaches of uh, St. Lucia when uh, when you watch this. Um, so, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with future big anniversaries down the road. I did Second Manassas and Cedar Run because uh, Scourge of War, or sorry, Take Command covered those. I did Chancellorsville because uh, Scourge of War covered that. Um, I guess we'll see. This is kind of the last game that was covered. I did Antietam as well. This is kind of the last game that's been covered by Scourge of War, so we'll see what they do next. Um, it's, it's hard to say, but, uh, you know, if the wilderness or something like that, um, maybe they're, I don't know, I guess I could just do some random, you know, custom made scenarios or open battles for that and just kind of pick some wooden environments and kind of talk about the battle. If that's something you're, you, you might find interesting, you know, let me know. Um, I'd definitely be happy to do that. But as you can see, this battle is over, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and I just want to thank you for watching. Uh, I want to thank you for staying loyal and following me. You know, the support I've gotten on some of these videos is absolutely astounding to me, and I really appreciate it. Um, but uh, if there's anything else you'd like you know, me to do, me to cover, let me know. I'd be happy to, to take a look into it, and um, you uh, keep on trucking out there, and this is the Historical Gamer signing out.